tutorial on a method known as finite differences. The basic idea here is you have a pattern and you somehow know that this pattern can be modeled with a polynomial. Okay. Um, and you're trying to come up with an, a formula or an expression that tells you, that describes the pattern. Or maybe if you think of this more in terms of function notation, you have the x values given to you in red and the y values given to you in green and you want a function that models y in terms of x. So anyways, you have this pattern, you're trying to figure out how to describe it. And you look at it for a little while and you can't really figure anything out. Like, I don't know, there's something going on, but I don't quite see it. But you're clever enough to start looking at, rather than the numbers themselves, the differences between the numbers. So what I mean by that is the difference between nine and two here is a seven. And the difference between 22 and nine is a 13. And 41 and 22, is 19. And 66 and 41, difference there is 25. And I guess I can keep going since I wrote all these numbers out. You keep taking differences, and this is what you get. And then you stare at the numbers in blue and you see a little bit of a pattern. And you're like, okay, I kind of see the pattern. Yeah, that's great, but what if I asked you what's the 100th number in this pattern? You, wouldn't, you could come up with it, but it would take you forever. It'd be nice if you had something a little bit more formulaic, and that's what we're gonna come up with here. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna take another difference. So what I mean is we're gonna look at these numbers in blue and treat them like we did these numbers in green here. Let's say the difference between 13 and seven is just six. And the difference between 19 and 13 is six, and 25 and 19 is six, and 31 and 25 is six, and six, and six, and six. Note that in this column, it appears that I have a constant difference of six. Anytime you can get a constant difference after some amount of differences, what that means is you will be able to model the original sequence in terms of a polynomial. And furthermore, if it took you two times, like it did here, to get a common difference, that means that we can model this with a second degree polynomial. If I had done this once and got a common difference, if these were all sixes, then I could model with the first degree polynomial, in other words, a linear function. If it took me three times, like in my next example it will, then I need a third degree polynomial to model it. But in this case, it took two times to get this constant difference. So what that means is my final answer is gonna look something like, move this down here maybe. Look something like this. It's gonna be a second degree polynomial. Unfortunately, I don't know what A is, nor do I know what B is, nor do I know what C is. I do know, because it took me two times, that I have a second degree polynomial. I just don't know what the coefficients in the polynomial are, but I can figure those out. And the way you're gonna figure those out is much like what we did here. You're gonna take these x values, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I don't know, let's do, I guess back to green maybe. You're gonna plug those into this polynomial here. You might think that you can't do that because you don't know what a, b, and c are, but it'll turn out you can. All right, you can change all the x's in this expression into ones, yeah, no problem. It would be a times one squared plus b times one plus c. You're like, yeah, but I don't know what that is. Well, you kind of do, it's a plus b plus c. You can't simplify it any further than that, but you have some sort of expression that represents this polynomial. And again, this came from the fact that it took me two differences to get a constant. This polynomial right here, when I change all the x's into one is this. If I change all the x's into two, I would get a times two squared, but two squared is four. So I would have four of these a's. And then I would have b times two, in other words, two b, and then I still have that c. And if you do it with threes, you'll get nine a plus three b plus c. If you do it with fours, you'll get 16 a plus four b plus c. And with fives, you'll get 25 a plus five b plus c. And I'm getting kind of sick of doing this. I'll do one more. Could have stopped long ago. Something like that. You know, like, so how does that help me? Help, how is this gonna help me figure out what A, B, and C are? Well, frankly, it's not. It's not the way it's written right now, but if we take the differences between these numbers in green, just like we took the differences between these numbers in green, we'll get a lot more information. Okay, I could do nine minus two gave me seven. That wasn't too bad. You might be a little intimidated by looking at four A plus two B plus C minus A plus B plus C, but it's really not that bad. 4a minus a would give me 3a, 2b minus b would give me 1b, and c minus c is nothing. 
9a plus 3b plus c minus 4a plus 2b plus c will give me 5a plus b. If you do the next one, you get 7a plus b. And if you do the next one, you get 9a plus b. And you do the next one, you get 11a plus b. You can probably kind of see where the pattern is going, just like you could see where the pattern was going here. But I'm not going to stop just like I didn't stop here because I don't have a constant, just like I didn't have a constant here. So I took the difference one more time. I'm going to take the difference here one more time. I'm going to come up with the second blue column. 5a plus b minus 3a plus b, it's just 2a. Because right, b minus b goes away, 5b minus 3a leaves me with 2a. 7a plus b minus 5a plus b, well, that's 2a also. Subtraction here, 2a also, 2a also. It looks like I have a constant, just like I had a constant here. So what does that tell me? It tells me that 2a must be equal to 6. That these guys right here are equal to these guys right here. And if I solve this, I find that a equals 3. And recall that a is the leading coefficient in this polynomial. So what I'm saying is that my answer will be 3x squared plus, shoot, I don't know what b is, right? I figured out what a is, but I don't know what b is, nor what c is for that matter. Seems like there's a lot more work, but really there's not. Because the minute you know that a equals 3, you can figure out what b is. Take anything from this column, anything you want. Let's do the top one, keep the number small. 3a plus b. This 3a plus b corresponds with this 7 right here. Just like this 5a plus b corresponds with this 13. And this 7a plus b corresponds with this 19. Take any pair. Let's take the 3a plus b. That must be equal to 7. This 3a plus b must be equal to this 7. But I know that a equals 3. And right? if you know that a equals 3, then this is 3 times 3 plus b. That must be 7. But 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 plus b equals 7. Therefore, b must be equal to negative 2. What that means is that I did a bad job by writing a plus here. Uh, my value of b, yeah, sure, why not? Let's make a big, ugly negative sign. My value of b is negative 2. So my polynomial is 3x squared minus 2x. Oh, but I still don't know what c is. But now you might have a pretty good idea how to get c. Take anything in this column that has a's, b's, and c's in it, whichever one you want, and take the number over in this column that corresponds. So you can take a plus b plus c and this 2 if you want. Or if you were sadistic and wanted to deal with bigger numbers, you could take 4a plus 2b plus c and this 9 right here. Or any of these, 36a plus 6b plus c and whatever number corresponds over here, and set up your equation. I'm going to take the top one because I'm simple like that. a plus b plus c has got to be equal to 2. However, I know from before that a was 3 and that b was negative 2. So 3 minus 2 plus c must be equal to 2. In other words, 1 plus c must be equal to 2. So c must be equal to 1. Therefore, my final polynomial is this guy right here. If you want to know what the 100th term in this sequence is, just change all the x's into 100s. You'd get 3 times, what is that, 10,000? So you'd get 30,000 minus 200 plus 1. 29,801, if I didn't screw that up in my head. Whatever, the point is, now you have a formula that gives you any term in this sequence that you want. That's good, but it's only going to work if it's a third degree polynomial. What if you were doing this on a different problem? What if you were working out, I don't know. Uh, actually, I do know. I have one written down. What did I wrote this down earlier? Here it is. What if you were working out this sequence? The first number, I guess this should be in green if I want to correspond. Three, and then you got a five, and then you got a 15, and then you got a 39, and then you got an 83. So the first number was a 3, the second was a 5, the third was a 15, the fourth, the fifth, the fifth. We could keep going if you want, but I think this will be all that we end up needing. And you want to repeat this. Well, you might think that I could stop the stupid video here because I already learned how to do it up here. It'll turn out you can't, and I'll show you why. Down here, when you start taking differences, 5 minus 3 is 2, 15 minus 5 is 10, 39 minus 15 is 24, 83 minus 39 is 44. 
And you're like, all right, I don't see the pattern here, so I'll subtract again. The difference between 10 and 2 is 8. 24 and 10 is 14. 44 and 24 is 20. Up here, after I took two differences, I got a constant number. Down here, I've taken two differences, and I don't have a constant number. Down here, I have to take a third difference in order to get a common number, to get a constant. 14 minus 8 is 6, and 20 minus 14 is also 6. It took me three tries to get this constant down here. So what that tells me is that my answer down here, my polynomial, tells me that this sequence right here cannot be modeled with a second degree polynomial. And instead, I'm going to have to use a third degree polynomial. Give myself a tiny bit of room to write. So it might end up looking something like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So now there's four different coefficients that I'm going to have to solve for. Wow. Okay. Uh, fortunately, the way we'll do it will be exactly like what we did up here. We'll take our general form of our solution, just like we did here, and plug in 1 everywhere you see an x, and then write what you get over here. If I take this and plug in 1 everywhere I see an x, I would get a plus b plus c plus d. What if you plug in 2 everywhere you see an x? I think you'd see that you get 8a plus 4b plus 2c plus d. What if you plug in 3 everywhere you see an x? What you'd end up with is 27a plus 9b plus 3c plus d. And 4, you would get 64a plus 16b plus 4c plus d. And I'll do one more 5 since I listed 5 over here. You'd end up with 125a plus 25b plus 5c plus d. And how does that help you? Well, it doesn't, just like this didn't help you. You had to start taking differences until you got a constant. That's what I'm going to do down here. Let's subtract the two of these guys. If you subtract the two of these guys, you'd get 7a plus 3b plus c. Subtract the two of these guys, you would get 19a plus 5b plus c. Subtract the two of these guys, you would get 37a plus 7b plus c. Subtract the two of these guys, this is getting the limit of my mental capacity, you would get 61a plus 9b plus c. Don't have a constant, so you better subtract again. Subtract the two of these guys, you get 12a plus 2b. Subtract the two of these guys, you get 18a plus 2b. Subtract the two of these guys, you get 24a plus 2b. These aren't constants, so you better subtract them again. Subtract the two of these guys, you get 6a. Subtract the two of these guys, you get 6a. Uh-oh. Not uh-oh. That's fantastic. I should be celebrating. I have a constant here. right? Up here, my constant was 2a. Down here, my constant is 6a. But that's OK. Do it the exact same way. I'll look over here and say this 6a corresponds with this 6. So therefore, 6a must be equal to 6. And thus, a must be equal to 1. So down here, when I'm trying to come up with my polynomial, my a will be a 1. I'll get 1x cubed. And 1x cubed, you don't even have to write the 1. You can just write x cubed. What about b, you ask? Well, just take one of these, whichever one you want, whichever of these three, and the number it corresponds with over here. So if I took the top one, I would say 12a plus 2b is equal to, it uh, looks like the number 8. How are you going to solve that? Well, you know a equals 1. So that tells you that 12 plus 2b is equal to 8. And if you subtract 12 from both sides of the equation, you get that 2b is equal to negative 4. And therefore, b equals negative 2. So I get x cubed minus 2x squared. And now I go about solving for c. Take any of these guys you want. I'm going to take the top one because that keeps the numbers the smallest. 7a plus 3b plus c. And note that that must be equal to the number it corresponds with 2 in this case. However, since I know that a equals 1 from over here, 7a is just 7. And I know that b equals negative 2, so 3b is negative 6. 7 minus 6 plus c equals 2. Well, 7 minus 6 is just 1. 1 plus what equals 2? Sounds like c has got to be equal to 1. So what that means is I have a 1 as my coefficient c. One more time, because once I figure out d, I'm done. Let's take this easiest one, a plus b plus c plus d, and note that a plus b plus c plus d must be equal to 
See the number it looks like that corresponds with is this three right here. Okay, A is equal to one, one, plus B is equal to negative two. So one plus negative two, AKA one minus two. C is equal to one, plus D has to equal three. One minus two plus one plus D equals three. Well, one minus two is negative one, plus one is zero. So it looks like zero plus D equals three, and therefore D equals three, and therefore this right here is my polynomial. That is the method of finite differences. We used it to solve for a third degree polynomial and for a second degree polynomial. You can use it to solve for any degree polynomial you want, as long as your pattern is being modeled by polynomial behavior. If you find that your differences are constant after just a single time, that means you just have a first degree polynomial. It'll just be maybe AX plus B and solve for A and B. If it takes you eight times to get a common difference, that means you have an eighth degree polynomial. A times x to the eighth power, plus B times x to the seventh, plus D times x to the sixth, plus C times x to the fifth, and so on. Once you get a common difference, go through this analysis, and you'll always be able to figure out what your polynomial is. That is the finite differences tutorial, so I'll end the video there.